Hey guys, this is my uh, this is a huge review. Well, it's coming up. First, I'll announce that I am going to Monday Night Raw on September the twelfth, uh, Ottawa, Ontario. So that's gonna be fun. Going with a bunch of friends, Jamie, Mike, and Tasha. So gonna have a good time. And uh, let's see, Raw's on tonight. I'm gonna watch that. And tomorrow night, I believe. Super Tuesday Smackdown, which is gonna have like a a world title match between Christian and Orton in a cage and gonna have a bunch of raw guys on too. So that's gonna be a hell of a show. Now we gotta get into the real good news. New Japan Pro Wrestling, All Japan Pro Wrestling, and Pro Wrestling Noah came together where uh, to do a disaster relief show, obviously, you know, the natural disasters. The quakes and the uh, of these tsunamis that ravaged Japan, and just a lot of bad stuff happened. So uh, it, it was for relief for that, and uh, it, you know, it could have been just a show with a bunch of guys on it, but it, it was actually really good. I mean, you're not expecting every match to be five stars because. It's a charity show, and it's about fun, too. It's not just about, you know, I don't know, great matches. <laughs> uh, let's get to the show. It's all together. It was August 27, 2011. Yeah, it was uh, that recent. From uh, Tokyo, Nippon, Budokan, 17,000 spectators. It was not only sold out, it was overcrowded, so they must have made more room, and it still sold that out. Uh, there will be another show, another altogether show. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when it is. It's either November or January of next year. I can't remember the exact date, but somebody on here will know. Uh, yeah, Pro Rest Spirit, Pro Rest TV. Someone knows. Okay, so uh, yeah, first of all, uh, Mara Fuji came out and just kind of greeted the crowd. When I heard the reaction that he got just coming out to talk, I knew the show, the crowd was going to be great. And I, yeah, they definitely were. I mean, I would put this crowd, I would say this crowd was better than the crowd for Money in the Bank. Not, maybe not quite as loud at all times, but I would say they were better than Money in the Bank crowd because they were smarter and they didn't fuck anything up by booing people that should have been cheering or anything. So it was good. All right. Uh, Marafuji brings up the uh, champions of Pro Wrestling, you know, All Japan Pro Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, respectively. You know, Sawama uh, takes the mic. Tanahashi and jeez, oh, <laughs> Tanahashi and Shiozaki don't really say anything. Sawama just kind of gets the crowd going. All right, the first match up is Sunrise of J. All these matches have great titles. Uh, Abushi Kota, Ishimori Taiji. Yamato Hiroshi and Bushi faced off against Tiger Mask, Kazuo Hayashi, Kondo Shuji, and Ricky Marvin. Um, this was a very solid opener. I would say about 62%. I can see uh, other people giving it higher. Uh, this was just junior heavyweight madness, if I have to call it anything. It, it was out of control, but in a good way, not in like, oh, God, face palm way. <laughs> this is exactly the type of match you want to open up show of this magnitude. I mean, it's a pretty fucking huge show if I don't, you know, pardon my French, but it's true. Uh, the juniors did their thing. The different promotions clashed. They did it perfectly. It wasn't just guys facing their own promotions. They were pretty much going exclusively after other guys, and they picked out specific guys. Uh, I could see Abushi versus Kondo coming out of this for the uh, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title, which would, be, you know, would excite me a lot. It'd be better than this hot shining right over to Kushida, I think. But you know, um, yeah, it's just really good stuff in here. It wasn't like amazing blow you away stuff. But it was like the high flying. The crowd responded to everything perfectly. This is what a crowd should be. They were there to have fun and be loose and, you know, get over, like, try to get over the hard times. And this crowd was there for a good time. They weren't there to just just offer, like, just kind of go silent. No. 
This Japanese crowd was as loud as any WWE crowd. It made a TNA crowd sound like 10 people. Actually, that is a TNA crowd. Anyway, uh, the, our second match was Fighting for the Future. Great title, right? Uh, Naito Tatsuya, Tanaguchi Shuhei, and Sonata Saya versus Mohamed Yone, Takashi, uh, Takahashi Yujiro, sorry, and Soya Manabu. Mm, not, I would say this is around the 50% mark. The title's great. How could you not love it, right? Fighting for the future. It was obviously implying that Naito, Tanaguchi, and Sonata were the future, not Muhammad Yone, uh, Yuchiro, and Soya. Although Soya, you know, pretty fucking good. I think he's pretty young. Uh, the, the fans were just completely in love with Naito. Naito was getting a louder reaction than Yone. And at this point in his career, already getting that reaction. In five years, that guy's going to have Tanahashi reactions, if not sooner. Just a great sign. Um, just great job by the three promotions putting like the perfect guys in it for the future. All right, so this was like power and uh, a dominance versus youth and fighting spirit, basically. It was done perfectly, and yeah. Sonata took a beating, but he came back strong, and I'd say the future looks pretty bright for Japan. Sonata seems to be getting a little bigger, and that's good, too. All right, then we had Over the Border. I don't know exactly what it means, but it sounds pretty fucking cool. Makabe Togi and Saito Akatoshi versus Goto Hiroki and Taiyo Kea. You know, this wasn't bad. It was uh, Saito and uh, Makabe on one team. They're good. I, I even came up with a name for them, okay? Unchained Destroyers. That's pretty fucking cool, right? Let me know. Kind of fits into what they both do. <laughs> this match started very quickly and violent. Oh, man. Uh, Goto and Saito... I mean, I don't... As far as I know, they never even met each other before, but they kicked the shit out of each other like they've been enemies forever. I mean, there wasn't this much animosity between Jacob and the Man in Black on Lost. <laughs> uh, when K got when K got tagged in after Goto was beat up for a while, the fans, you know, they really popped after they found out who K was. Uh, basically, K has an identity crisis in that no one knows who he is. But other than that, you know, hey, you need a little vanilla every once in a while. It's just kind of weird that he was put in this match. He's got the skills. He's just, I don't know, like I said, plain. He's Elwood Blue's dinner. Dry, white toast, no butter. Uh, I, I can actually see Saito and uh, Makabe going on to become a team or at the next All Together show, teaming up, maybe taking on the tag champions, taking on a bad intention, something like that. Which I'm surprised they weren't on the show. Uh, Goto and Kea. Eh, Goto was really good. They just don't work that great as a team. I mean, you don't expect them to, but Makabe and uh, Saito, they worked really well for the first time. So, yeah, like I said, not a bad match at all. All right. All right, then we had the Junior One Night Carnival Prince Devitt, Taguchi Ryusuke, Suzuki Katoro. Nakajima Katsuhiko and Kai versus Kanemoto Koji, Kenta, see, I said it like that, uh, Kanemaru Yoshinabu, sorry, Minoru and Hiryanagi Genba, which you might look at that name and be like, what? But, you know, he's part of No Mercy, he spits on people, he, you know, he does funny stuff and he's entertaining, he's a weasel, so he fits, believe it or not. Uh, this, I would give a solid, like, like a 79 maybe, like almost four stars, if you want to call it that way. Like Kenta clearly got the loudest ovation out of the No Mercy Clan when they came out, which, when they were announcing the names. But uh, Kanemoto, his reaction blew away that. Uh, Nakajima got a lot of big reactions, great stuff. Uh, basically, um, Kanemoto and Nakajima had like a, like a hate thing going on almost. Like Nakajima's like, fuck you old man, I'm taking your spot sort of thing. I could see that being a match. Hopefully Nakajima defeats Suzuki because someone needs to get that belt off him. 
and then it's Nakajima versus Kanemoto at the next All Together show for the title. That would be fucking amazing. I guarantee, I guarantee, at least, if you want to give it stars, four and a quarter, four and a half stars. That's like minimum. I could see that being the match of the year. Think about it. Nakajima, Kanemoto, maybe 15 minutes, and them kicking the shit out of each other. Basically, uh, can, nobody beats people up better than Kanemoto. If there is a Facebook page for... I like watching people get the piss beat out of them, you know, there'd be a picture of Kanemoto kicking the piss out of someone. That's just how it goes. So anyway, I'll get back to uh, the match. I, yeah, the, the uh, Nakamura Kanemoto stuff is great, but Kenta and Kanemoto worked so well together. Uh, they were like a brother tag team out there. It was pretty crazy. Older brother, young brother, but. Uh, multiple face washes from both men. And they kind of worked together. It was really cool. The match is very fast paced. Uh, uh, it could have turned into a senseless clusterfuck of spots, but it, it worked out. Fans loved it. I loved it. No one got confused. It, it ran pretty smoothly, especially for all the men in it. And yeah, like I said, if I want one thing to come out of this, all together too, please, Japan. If anyone hears this from New Japan Noah, just, I don't know, if somehow you hear about this. Kanemoto versus Nakajima for the GHC Junior Championship. If Na Nakajima gets it, even if he doesn't get it, make the match without him. title. I want to see it. I'm pretty sure I can get a lot of other people to see it. Nakajima, best junior heavyweight in the world. Kanemoto, one of the best of all time. Let's do it. Do it up. Speaking of great juniors, one night reunion, Jushin Thunder Liger, Funaki Masakatsu, and Takuma Sano, Versus Suzuki Minoru, Aoki Atsushi, and Taichi. This was fun. Uh, the entrances alone just did it for me. Suzuki's entrance, uh Nair or something like that. It's, it's close to that. I don't know. I can yell it. <laughs> it that it was just great. The whole crowd chant, 70,000 people yelling it. Oh, man. Great entrance. Ring Tani got kicked in the face again, which is always good. And that, that gives you chills. And what, what's going to give you more chills than that? Basically, it was like falling off ACDC with the Rolling Stones because you got Liger's song and damn, that's a great that's a great entrance theme. It was like the two best entrance themes in the world lined up. So that got me going already. I was like, this match already delivered and hasn't started. Uh, Suzuki's team got in the face of, uh, you know, Team Liger, I guess you call them. And uh, before the bell even rang, the introductions were done. So we got this, this match kind of broke up pretty fast. Uh, yeah, Suzuki was getting it in with Funaki, and that's what everyone wanted. And then he goes out, tags out to Taichi, and basically throws Taichi to the Lions, which is great. You could normally be like, oh, I want to see Funaki versus Suzuki. But then you got to think, that little fuck Taichi needs to have his ass kicked. And you just want to see his fucking head kicked, man, basically. Okay, so... Yeah, Liger uh, was good in this, and everyone was kind of good, but there wasn't too much going on. Uh, Suzuki, Aoki, and Taichi were really dirty in this match, and they even Aoki, like just great stuff. I when uh, Sano got in, there was fifteen hundred soul butts thrown in fifteen seconds. I don't know how that happens, but somehow it did. <sighs> That's all he threw in double stomp. Um, yeah, a double shote from Liger and Funaki was really cool. It was a triple drop kick. We just, uh, yeah, we got all the greatest hits, I guess. And, uh, this match was nostalgic and fun. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest match ever, but it was, yeah, it was fun, like I said. And that's kind of where I'm going to rate it, because I don't want to, you know, make it look crappy by giving it, like, 55 or 60 at the most. All right, the Destroyer shows up for his own Battle Royal, the Destroyer Cup. All together, special battle royal. I guess I'll run through all the names. There's so many of them. Hideo Saito, I gotta read this. Ishii Tomohiro, Ghetto, Watanabe, Taiaki, Takahashi Hiromu, Kushida, Honoma Tomaki, Anoe Wataru, Super Strong Machine, Nishikawa Jun, Kajiwara Satoshi, Miyahara Kento, Chi Gyeong Lee, I don't know if it's a Chinese gimmick or what. Soya Takumi, Sushin, 
Nakanawa Yesafumi, Masada Fuchi Masanabu, Rene Dupree, was he in that? I don't know. Joe Dury, big guy. Zack Sabre Jr., Onoe Masao, a.k.a. Poindexter, as I've named him. Uh, Ogawa Yoshinari, Tawe Akira, Shiga Kentaro, Black Bushi, and the greatest wrestler of all time in Bizarro World, King Fali. Uh, this, uh, let's call this match fucked up, <laughs> but good. Uh, you couldn't have made a more confusing match if Vince Russo had the book. I mean, sure, Vince Russo would have made it twice as long and had a shitty outcome, but you know, whatever. This was the Japanese, the Japanese answer to WrestleMania 17's gimmick battle royal, basically. Um, yeah, a battle royale with cheese. We'll call it that. <laughs> uh, <in a> way, <laughs> looks like he's the shit at all times. Apparently, he saw a King Fali match and he couldn't control his bowel movements. I don't like Fali. Sorry, you can't wrestle. Um, yeah, Fali gets eliminated really early on, which gets a huge pop from me. I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, that's how much I don't like him. Uh, he, Teo Saito is suffering from dementia, clearly. He's always in a different costume, walking around like he's confused. It's kind of freakish. He's so much to check on him. Um, yeah, Fuchi got to be Fuchi, and Fuchi is great. He pretty much only did scoop slants and a little bit of choking. But he held the guys up for a long time. He got the crowd popping. Just... Now, it's great stuff. Um, yeah, Shiga was all right. Uh, the guy in his 60s is actually a better wrestler, but... It didn't stop him from winning. Sorry for the spoiler. Point Dexter wins. It was fun. Uh, then we had Midsummer Encounter in Budokan, aka Clash of the Gigantic, the Gigantic Motherfuckers. Like these guys are huge. In fact, this was I'll tell you the match: Nagata Yuji, Tenzan Hiroshi, Nishimura, Nishimura. Usumu and Onoe Wataru versus Morishima Takeshi, Akibono, Yoshi Yataka, and Ryoto Hamo with Cheese. That's right, I call him Hamo with Cheese. Okay, this match, uh, apparently, the best way to raise money for earthquake relief is by causing more earthquakes. Holy shit, this was. Heavyweights versus super sumo, gigantic motherfucking heavyweights. Uh, these boys were big and they gave a new me to plus size. Uh, this match was measured on the Richter scale. I mean, the tonnage in here was just astounding. Uh, man, the ring literally jumped when Hammer went for a flying ass drop of death, which would have killed his opponent if he didn't move. And once they got in, more Shiba got in. Shit got intense. It got real. Um, Onoe was sort of an annoying mosquito who needed to be squashed. And, but he, he fit, I guess. It was supposed to be Kojima. That would have been better, but he got hurt. Uh, the big man uh, threw around their weight. And, uh, you know, it was cringeworthy, but in like a good way. So, yeah, pretty good match here. Uh, if I had to call this anything, I would call it gargantuan. That's what, you, that's what you gotta rate the match. You can't rate it any other way. So, yeah, good stuff. All right, then we got our first great match of the night. And there was a match that was 79%. It's not great. Really close. But no fear. Go ahead. Sasaki Kensuke and Akiyama Jun versus No Fear, Takayama Yoshihiro and Umori Takao. Takao. 84%. This was my first... Uh, true dream match of the night, and uh, yeah, match of the year candidate. Strong. I'm 84. Subject to change, it could go up. It's not going down. That match was amazing. Amori was over. Takeyama was real fucking over. Akiyama was super fucking over. And Kensuke was Jesus Christ returning to Earth fucking over. Damn, this match was good. I don't know how to go explain it about it other than that. It was just. Amazing! It was Clash of the Titans. It was everything that you could build it and more. Uh, every time, like a famous signature move was hit by either of the guys, or a double team was hit by Takayama and Awari, like from way back, the crowd would pop like 
basically the a stadium shot when a band's playing a stadium show when they get into their greatest hits. Basically, every signature move is re it was received like that. So it was great. This match was so good. It was it was so it was so fucking stiff. Like ah, oh. it was like a porn star in Viagra, only stiffer. The action was just magnificent. There was great moves. Everything was done perfectly. This has to rank near the top of anyone's list. If anyone sees this match and it's not on their match of the year candidate list, their list isn't legitimate. It don't mean shit. This match was great, amazing. Watch it now. Over four stars, probably around four and a half, maybe four and a quarter. Either it doesn't really matter exactly. You just have to see it. Ratings don't do it justice. The crowd reaction alone. All right, then we have Believe the Power of Pro Wrestling. Kobashi Kenta and Buto Keiji versus Yano Toru and Izuka Takashi. 80%. Great match. It's, I mean, it sounded like a bomb going off when Kobashi's music hit. The crowd ovation. And Muto got maybe even a louder one. And he just revered. He's an icon. Both of them are. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. This match was like heroes versus villains. Uh, the screaming Kobashi guy was there, you know. Kobashi! Yeah, that guy was there, and now, I don't know. You, you can't fuck with the reaction that Kobashi Muto got. No one can. In any sport or thing. That was just amazing. Basically, when Kobashi hit a chop or Muto hit a wizard, like any kind of thing like that, the crowd would go off like it, like Jeter when he hit his 3,000 home run. Only louder. Uh, just great stuff. Yano even tried to give Kobashi a haircut. It was really devious, dirty heel stuff. Muto got so mad, he grabbed an umbrella from some lady in the crowd, and white one too. <laughs> Muto yells, Motherf Motherfucker! Which never gets old. Uh, I, let's just say after this match, I believe in the power of pro wrestling. So it worked. Classic heel versus face. I mean, this was, you just wanted to, it, it was like being an eight-year-old again, sitting in the living room, wanting to see your heroes vanquish their evil foes. No, uh, there's not much other way to explain it. Like I said, four stars, okay? Then we had All Together Now, the main event, Tanahashi Hiroshi, the IWGP Heavyweight Champion, Shiozaki Go, the GHC Heavyweight Champion, and Suwama, the... All Japan Pro Wrestling Triple Crown Champion against the number one contenders, respectively, Nakamura Shinsuke, Sugiro Takashi, and Kenso. Sorry. Uh, I can't express in words how much bigger and better and more awesome and epic and every other fucking cliche you want to throw this match would have been without Kenso. Sorry, but Kenso, fuck you, man. Uh, the only one man can officiate this. That's uh, Wada Kyohei. Just great stuff. Uh, Nakamura starts it off with uh, Suwama, and it's kind of a the jockeying for position. Then it turns into a little bit of a grappling contest, a little almost jujitsu, like position more than submissions. Uh, yeah, Kenso must be on Somas. He falls off the apron, uh, like sells it like an idiot. Basically, Kenso is Japan's answer to Matt Hardy. He's got to be on the Somas, man. He's like a fucking zombie out there. Nobody's that uncoordinated. Unless he has a head injury, which is worse. He should be retired either way. Uh, Nakamura gets in. The match becomes with uh, Sugera. Nakamura gets in with, sorry, Shiozaki first. And uh, that's just whew, business picked up, as JR would say. Then when Sugira gets in with Shiozaki, holy shit, these two were hitting each other like wrath of God shit. Vanderlei Silva would have been, if he would have been in that crowd, he would have been cringing. And this is from pro wrestling. I mean, this was insane. Uh, somehow Kenzo was over. My theory is the crowd got into his pills and they were too fucked up, so they're just cheering for anything. Kenzo made an ass of himself nearly every point in this match that he got in. Anytime he was out, I was almost cheering because it became, it went from being like, good match with Kenzo, great match with him. Uh, I'm not exaggerating either. You can watch it for yourself. Um, and once Nakamura tagged himself in, 
you know, went after Tana. That was great. Sawama and Sugera had some great exchanges. I mean, they're very similar, I would say, but different size, which makes it really cool. Uh, yeah, of course, the show stealers definitely Nakamura Shinsuke and Shiozaki go. Shiozaki's hitting my. Like, his chops right now are like Kobashi and like his strength prime. I mean, he's throwing some heaters, man. It, it's, it's the point where you don't hear a slap anymore. You hear a, a concussive boom. It sounds like a fucking concussion grenade went off. Just really crazy stuff. And then Nakamura throws those forearms. It sounds like he broke his jaw. Oh, man. Kento was obviously the weak link, and, you know, he looked really bad in this match, and I really hope All Japan replaces him with a wrestler. He looked better in WWE. Really good match. Had the potential to be a great match, but Kento had to go and kind of fuck it up a little bit. But the ending was kind of worth it because Kento got his, so, yeah, it was really good. All right, so the show ends kind of almost Bollywood-esque. <laughs> with the lot with the live band in the ring singing the all together song because you know the show has its own song which was great. All the wrestlers are singing along. A couple of them get a microphone. It's it's like a scene out of a movie. Like I said, it's almost like Bollywood, like uh, yeah, like Japanese Bollywood. It was crazy. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of hard not to sing along with it. Overall, uh, I loved the show. It was very important. It was for a great cause. And I can't wait for All Together 2. There's some great matches possibly. Shiozak and Go versus Nakamura Shinsuke for the GHC Heavyweight title. Or it could be Title 4 title by that point. There's so many possibilities. Overall, I give All Together 8.5 Western Lariats out of 10. Can't wait for the next one. Hey, All Together, go see it now. If you don't, shame on you. All right, guys. I'm going to go sleep because this thing, oh, man. It was like a man-eater. All right. Good day. Good luck. Good everything else. Peace.